Welcome to the 43rd and final and bumper episode of the sixth season of the Ubuntu podcast. It's Wednesday the 18th of December and we're going to discuss what's been happening in the news and in the Ubuntu community. We'll look back at the predictions we made for 2013 and see if they came true. Short answer. (laughs) (laughs) And make some predictions for 2014 because we just haven't learned. In response to popular demand, there will be a quiz because it's Christmas Uh, and we'll read your feedback if you're listening or watching live you can actually see our faces you can send us messages using the chat facility on the website and in the IRC channel I'm Tony and joining me this week are the regular Ubuntu podcast family of Laura hello Mark hello and Alan hello so Alan what have you been playing with recently um I uh my kids are off um on Christmas holiday and uh, when in the uh, evening after after they've um, come uh, home, no, well, after I've finished work, ah. I was going to say after they come home from school, but they're broken up from school. Uh, when they when uh, I've finished work, uh, they asked me if we can play games because the games consoles in my office, <laughs> and so I've been playing Ouya, the Ooh, yeah. crowdfunded games console that um, runs Android, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes. I and seem to remember you were a little scathing about it when we talked about it. On yeah, the it wasn't brilliant, but there's a couple of games on there which are just superb for multiplayer, like mm. uh, especially for the kids. There's one called Towerfall with um, little characters. It's a static screen, and you jump around and fire arrows at each other. And it's really simple, really frenetic, and um, it's really hilarious fun for my kids. Have they taught you how to play it yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, they tend to gang up on me, <laughs> which, you know, seems fair. Understandable. Yeah. Uh, that And another one called uh, Bomb something, I can't remember. But I actually, I've had it for a few months, and I just this week paid for my first games, because the, mm. the whole thing is they're free to play. Mm. But then they either time out, or you, you, um, you need to pay for extra levels or something like that. Um, and I only this week gave some money to the developers to buy the games. Cause they were Presumably you paid for the thing in the first place. Oh, yes, yeah, so I paid for the console. <laughs> but the, yeah, the, the promise was always all the games are free mm. for a limited time. Dot, right. dot, you know. But, um, yeah, so those two games, bought those. And me and the kids have been, uh, yeah, uh, playing quite a lot of Ouya. Bonding over the Ouya. Yes. Excellent. How about you, Mark? Have you been up to anything fun? I installed Steam OS. Oh, right, yeah, I know all about that. Of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I mean, and I, I'm sure that you're already running your own Steam box. You're probably part of the uh, the beta. I don't have just a Steam box. I have a whole Steam room. Good. <laughs> but do you have a Steam engine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Highlighting Tony's lack of game knowledge there. Once. So how have you um, been finding your Steam OS? Um, I, I only really installed it to, A, see what the install process was like and have a bit of a play around with it. Because um, they said on uh, the release that, it's only really for sort of seasoned Linux people rather than for general users because the install process is a bit of a pain. So I thought I'd see if it's actually a bit of a pain or if it's fairly easy. And it is fairly easy if you don't mind completely blatting your existing system and starting again. Oh, um, right. But if you want to do something a bit cleverer, then um, you need, basically need to be familiar with the Debian installer, which is quite a bit less friendly than the Ubuntu installer. Hmm. Is that just the text mode installer that we know from? Our... No, it's it's a GUI, but it does things like ask you which modules of the installer you want to load, so you get various oh, features and right, yeah. yes. So I did it on a spare hard disk using an easier method, um, and it's basically yeah, it's quite nice. I did a blog post with all of my sort of findings, but it boots up to Steam in big picture mode and lets you switch to a GNOME three GNOME shell desktop mm. and back and. You can basically do anything you do with Debian, assuming the packages are in Steam's repository because it doesn't use the Debian repositories. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, no, it's it's certainly a, a very nice 1.0. Cool. Well, as the wind whistles down the chimney on a rather wet and blustery night here oh, in I the UK, a euphemism. no, no, that's <laughs> that's something that's else enough. entirely. Um, it's time to turn to Laura. That wasn't a connection between you and blustery wind. No, um, thank uh, you. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. I've Good. been... Uh, I've backed two crowdsourcing things. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> um, what were they? <laughs> one, I don't think I'd done it by last time anyway. One was um, Robert Llewellyn's third book on Unbound. Oh, yes. UK. The one that you've got your name in the others, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. In one of them, yeah. And uh, the other one was the Wipe book 
on oh, Kickstarter that. that you pointed me at. Yeah, oh. it just looked quite cool. So it's but, like a sorry, a whiteboard book. <laughs> Right. Yeah, a it's dry wipe book. book yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, where each page, you could keep the pages, can't you? There's mm. multiple pages, like 50 pages or something. That's something, yeah, I'm not sure. I've not backed it because they keep mucking about with the with the rewards and I'm kind of backing off until they, <laughs> you don't know they what decide they what their rewards are going to be. Uh, right, so are you saying when you launch a crowdfunding thing, you should be really clear about the rewards and what level they apply at <laughs> and you shouldn't change them midway through yeah, this, the... This is a lesson that yeah. many people have learned. Right, okay. <laughs> and some haven't yet. Yeah, fair enough. Excellent. Well, there we go. What about you, Tony? What have you been up to? Oh, uh, I, I photographed my last wedding of the year, week, weekend wow. before last, so uh, since the last episode. And um, yeah, it's all uh, all done for Christmas now. Well, I have to do work processing <laughs> them, but you know, the last actual day of photography has been and gone. That's funny. Someone passed me a link of uh, photos of a wedding I went to. Oh, really? Yeah, Ian and Haley. Oh, Ian and Haley, yeah. yeah. Cuthbertson. Yeah. Yes, the, uh, the photos that you did there. Yeah, very I did. Very yeah. good. Wow, thank you very much. Yeah, very good. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. anyway, anyway, I don't want to sound so surprised. Have, have some more mulled wine. Yeah, I will do. There's yeah. a nice picture of you with a big rainbow umbrella. Oh, I missed that one. Or no, a white umbrella? Alan was um, was my assistant because mm. it rained and he carried the umbrellas and things for oh, me. Yeah. I think he yeah. might have snuck in one. But, yeah. <laughs> it was good having a, a good faithful assistant. <laughs> Keep rubbing it in, Tony. It <laughs> sounds like a fun pack show. <laughs> Now it's time for some news. Um, Nokia are reported to be developing a low-end smartphone codenamed Normandy to run a forked version of Android. What are they thinking? Mm. Mm. Um, images of the phone lacking the hardware buttons required for a Windows phone have been leaked. I think that's how they've deduced it. It's not a Windows phone. Oh, because it hasn't got the Windowsy button at the bottom in the middle. Yeah. It's a round button. Oh, is it a bit Windows like logo. a right? A bit like yeah. an iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and that's yeah, a requirement. I always thought that their agreement with Microsoft was exactly. that they weren't allowed to make things called smartphones. So the fact that they're calling it a low-end smartphone, does that go under the radar of their agreement with Microsoft? Well, apparently they already do one uh, called Asha. Asha, yeah. Which yeah, is not really, so smart, really. Yeah, mm. well, it's really popular in the Far East, I think. Yeah. Mm. Um, so they said that they yeah. think this is going to replace that. You can buy them on Amazon. The Asha, I think it's a... One, Nokia 101 or something like that. Yeah. Um, mm. Which, you know, is like 20 quid or something. And in, in Western countries, people buy them as a second phone, <laughs> as a backup phone or a phone you go to a, like a festival, a festival with. Um, well, yeah, I yeah, mean, you, yeah. you really, at that price, you could really be brim full of ashes, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <sighs> That's more my wine, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. yes, I think. They, they suggest that they might be trying to replace it with the Android one. It's, uh, which, it's a fork of Android, though. Yeah, but Microsoft can't object to them replacing the Asher because the Asher one they knew about already and they right. knew it was so mm. popular. Right. So. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think I talked about Nokia last year in my predictions, so uh, we shall oh, see whether they come to for that. Yeah. A group of companies, including Facebook, Twitter, Google and Microsoft, have launched... Re- um, Reform Government Surveillance, a campaign to persuade US and other governments to rebalance its approach to surveillance, taking into account individuals' rights to privacy. And they've written an open letter to Washington, um, to which the Free Software Foundation responded, pointing out that the reason that the governments can do this is because these companies who've written the letter harvest all of users' data and store it in their networks, which have then been tapped into. So the argument is, if you weren't capturing it in the first place, it wouldn't be there for them to tap yeah. into. <laughs> well, actually, it's your fault that I'm stealing from you. You know, yeah. If you were, if you didn't have these nice shiny things in the first place, I wouldn't be tempted to take them from. If you, you hadn't put all your money in a bank, you couldn't have had it stolen from the bank. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. And there's also um, another website that's uncannily similar to ReformGovernmentSurveillance.com called Reform. Corporate surveillance. Well, yes. They're basically, in the FSF's letter, they said, we need reform corporate surveillance.com. So someone made it. But instead of making a, addressing um, addressing the company saying, okay, we think that you need to reform the way you're behaving, they're addressing it to users saying, you're all idiots. Don't use these things. They're bad. Mm. Which is, you know... Use these things right. instead. Well, no, I don't think it even says I that. Think there's a yeah, link it to it. Oh, is there? Oh, okay. It's, it's a, mail or something. Yeah, it's a phone... 
project, an open phone project. Set yeah. up. Oh, sorry, the indie phone guy. Yes, yes. that's it. But, but I mean, I think I just think it would have been it would have been a more credible response if it actually said to the if it like mirrored what the companies were saying to the governments by mm. saying it to the companies mm. rather than saying to the users, oh, you're all stupid. It's your fault. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Interesting stuff. Mm. The British Library has released over one million images from its collection on Flickr under a Creative Commons Zero license. What's the CC Zero license? That's basically the equivalent of public domain um, where there isn't a public domain. You don't have to attribute it, but it'd yeah. be nice if you did, which is what they've said. And what are these images of? All sorts of stuff. From books? Yeah, like historical things oh scanned in images yes photos yes. a lot of it's down to microsoft apparently they yeah, they did, did a lot a, of the digitization yeah and then they donated it to the library and then that's made the library can do their thing and they're hoping to do more but the problem is you can't easily navigate images because unless you've tagged them in the first place you can't really retrieve them very easily so they're releasing all this data for people to then hack and play with and try and come up with better ways of tagging it or indexing it in some way they should just upload it all to google i hear they're really good at analyzing images yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah let the nsa index it all for them and then yeah, that's true. And we're done yeah i'm sure they've got some good search I, algorithms. I, I posted a picture of uh, sky the other day on google plus my cat sky. oh yeah not, the sky. <laughs> not just blue uh no uh my cat not this and time dear. it uh, automatically hashtagged it as <gasps> cat a day mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that's freaky. Yeah. Cat recognition if you, algorithm. If you actually search on, in your photos on Google Plus for cat, it's just like all pictures of cats, not ones that I've tagged. It knows what a picture of a cat looks like. <laughs> and was it on a Saturday? Uh, it happened to be on a Saturday, yeah. So, yeah, there, there is some correlation between the fact that Alan always posts cats on Saturday. But even that's creepy that they've realised that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, arguably it's useful because, you know, if I, if, if I wanted to search for pictures of you know, my kids or something, I could probably type children and it would find pictures of my kids in my fo- in my, my collection um, in the same way that if... You, you know, you can type in stuff like, um, you know, saucepan and it will find pictures of saucepans. It's, it's incredibly accurate, which is why I, you know, jokingly suggested that the, the, <laughs> that the British Library do this because they've clearly got the smarts to do this pattern mm. matching. It's scary though it is. Yeah, indeed. A report has been published by a group of anonymous security researchers which accuses BT of giving GCHQ and the NSA backdoor access to customers' networks. The report describes the missing piece from the mass surveillance network described by Edwin's, Edward Snowden's leaks. Um, and basically, the idea is that BT, Infinity, Home Hub things are all compromised and backdoored and uh, giving people access to things they shouldn't otherwise have access to, connecting to a a US Department of Defense-owned VPN when it starts up, uh, allowing potentially anything to be tunneled through if they decide they want to accept the traffic, presumably. I'm just waving to the NSA now. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, don't don't you have one of those modems, Tony? I do, yes. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's interesting. There's been some reports that that this might not actually be as as, um, scary as... as, um, as the report I suggests. Thought, I thought something like that might appear. But then, <laughs> yeah. you know, Who I'm sure it, it's it's all a bit, you know, surely GCHQ would be very keen for something like that to appear. Yeah. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, a guy story. called uh, Robert Graham, yeah. who's a cybersecurity analyst, has, has analysed this a little bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll put his, uh, mm. his link in the show notes. But he says, you know, the paper contains nothing that is evidence of NSA spying. That's um, true. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. It's not the, not the first time. He says skipping all the paranoid ravings. Yeah, <laughs> none of the technical does, details show anything amiss. It does sort of the the whole thing looks very crappy. But then I'm wondering if it's supposed if it's supposed to be like a parody of all the crappy powerpoints <laughs> that the NSA <laughs> did. Well, Bruce Schneier's left BT. Oh really? Yeah. Apparently. I didn't even know he was at BT. No, I didn't. But yesterday he left. I think it, or he left it yesterday. Announced he'd left. Oh, oh, interesting. Right. Well, he was their kind of security, mm. uh, not head of security or anything like that, but kind of guru, a consultant, a sort of right. visionary, I think, right. yeah. uh, advisor. Ah, there we go. Excellent. So not the first time that um, compromised equipment's been shipped out to customers in the UK, at least. Mm. Um, um, but that's the end of the news.
And now it's time for the community news. Um, a discussion has taken place on the Ubuntu release list about how upgrades from 12.04 will be handled, given that the next release after that, 13.0, sorry, 12.10 will be handled. I given, did get those versions right, didn't I? Uh, yeah, you did. Uh, how <laughs> upgrades from 12.10 will be handled, given 13.04 will be end of life before 12.10 is. So if you're on 12.10 and you're on 12.10 beyond the lifetime of 13.04, because 13.04 is only a nine-month um, mm-hmm. support, whereas... 1210 the one before it is 18 months support if you then try and upgrade from 1210 to 1304 you're you're effectively going from a supported, supported release to an unsupported release which, which is, probably hasn't been updated for nine months yeah so <laughs> so um there's a, a discussion about it and um basically the plan is to let all of those releases be able to be upgraded to 14.04 easily. So normally we always recommend people right. go, you know, step one release yeah. at a time yeah. or from LTS to LTS. But they're saying uh, so the conclusion from this was just everyone go to LTS and you'll be fine. Right. And this is only because the changes to the support lifecycle yeah. in this one instance yeah. have caused this effect. It won't happen yeah. again, will it? No, it shouldn't do, no. Unless they get something wrong. Unless we shorten the, you know, supported life cycle to like a month or something or go rolling release or something wacky like that. Mm, yeah, that'll sure. never happen. <laughs> <laughs> Canonical is forking the GNOME control centre for 14.04. Ubuntu currently applies a large patch set to the stock GNOME 3.6 control centre, so we'll now maintain this fork until the new Ubuntu, Ubuntu system settings utility is ready to replace it. Yeah, so this, like, you know, as soon as someone says canonical forking? is forking something oh my god why don't they give it all back to the community alan yeah what a catastrophe but the, i mean the problem is that we're holding back um going to the later versions of gnome control center because we don't need it and we won't need it in 1404 because we've got our own new settings control thing which is the thing that's on the phone which will be migrated eventually to to the um to the desktop by 1410 but in 1404 which is the lts we need something um so we're going to carry on using the version that we've got, which is a heavily maintained GNOME control centre. It's not a catastrophe at all. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> uh, there's been an unofficial Ubuntu One app written uh, called U1 Files, and it's been released uh, primarily for Android, but as it's written in QML, it also runs on iOS, Ubuntu Touch, and Jola's Selfish OS. How cool is Isn't that? QML wonderful. Very. Yeah, it's cross-platform. Yeah. Anyone would think it was, you know, chance and happenstance that we chose QML, but it allows you to create these because Because you apps. want to lock everyone into Ubuntu, obviously. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> yeah, this shows, like, you know, before we finished, that <laughs> someone yeah. has created an app. I think that's brilliant. It's a great example of an app that's, you know, cross-platform on Android, iOS, Ubuntu Touch, and Yola's Selfish. Yeah. And it's particularly good because apparently the official Ubuntu One app doesn't run on Ubuntu Touch or something. <laughs> yeah, we haven't done a Ubuntu, fi- uh, Ubuntu One file app for Ubuntu Touch yet. So you could just adopt this one. That would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. That would be pretty awesome. Mm, yes. Uh, M. Deslaw, I'm going to say that name. Mark. Mark Deslaw has blogged about trusted helpers, the mechanism by which Ubuntu Touch will allow users to explicitly control which data their apps have access to. And it's really cool. I like yeah, it a lot. I do too. What's cool about it? Well, because when you install an app on Android, you get a big list of permissions it wants. No explanation as to why it wants the permissions. And then you either have to say, yes, I want you to have access to my address book, my internet, and be able to turn my phone on and off and tell who's calling me. Or you have to say, no, I don't want to install the app. Whereas so of course you say yes. Of course you say yes, because you want the app. Right. Whereas this is going to have a mechanism whereby when an app, when you poke a function in an app which needs to talk to, say, your contacts database, it will talk to your contacts app and your contacts app will say, OK, select some contacts. And then you'll then the app will only be able to access the contacts you've selected. I got that right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's kind of on the fly permissions almost exactly. rather than having to say up front everything. Yeah. It's really right. neat. Do you think mm. it'll slow things down? Uh, well, sounds... slow from a user point of view of being able to do something. Yeah, because you've got this extra layer between you. I don't think so, because, I mean, the the permission you're providing is um, access, is that's the file I want. So yeah. you'd still have to do that. If, you'd, if the app had permission to access your whole contacts database, unless you wanted to spam all of your contacts at once, mm. you'd still want to say, oh, yeah, that's the one I want. That's true. Yeah, so, for example, if you wanted to run a chat app um, to chat with your friends, you might want it to have access to your friends but not your work colleagues mm. and so you could say you know 
tick all of your your friends rather than say the whole whole address book including you know everyone you've ever met hmm, interesting mm-hmm. cool i think that's the end of the community news and there's one more item uh <laughs> this would be good this uh, so tony enlighten us there's some some more news gaming news okay yeah well pixel have thrown the hat into the steam machine ring um and they've done something really quite interesting with the form factor on this one i think okay. you find all oh. right Right. Yeah. So it's basically the size of a forty-two inch TV. So it's a PC in a very flat case, standard PC hardware, very flat case. The idea being it could be mounted behind your TV. Oh, instead of like being a box under your telly, it's behind your telly. Yeah, it's the behind the case thing. It's basically a standard PC in 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 the very novel case. Um, Right. And it's really, I think, a case of Pixel throwing their hat in the ring early to ride off the back of the recent SteamOS release. Oh. Obviously, you can install anything you like on it because it is just basically a PC. So you can oh, stick right. a bunch standard of PC components. Yeah, not, yeah, it's not like a console. Um, no, no, it's, it's you know user upgradable, I guess, as long as you can fit it in the form factor. Hmm. Um, they've got quite a bit of room to play with, though, so it can fit a decent recent generation GeForce or Radeon GPU in the case, along with uh, plenty of storage options as well. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, so it make a really good thing, something like a Myth TV box or a Xbox Media Center mm-hmm. XBMC for those of you who don't know what that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um, you probably see quite a few of these cases coming on the market i think once uh-huh. once assuming this is successful prove its point and you know you'll see quite a lot of these coming wow um does yeah. it does it have a does it say whether it comes with a controller or anything um they haven't mentioned controller um, they haven't given detailed specs out of just exactly what's under the case yet either um but you could use a usb or, or wireless uh controller from xbox 360 or something like that they're well supported in steam okay um when are they shipping um, well, first January, according to the website, so not in time for Christmas, sadly. It'd but be you know. interesting to see if they if they manage to ship them with Steam OS on. Mm. Yeah, that'd be cool. Do you know how much they are? Uh, about six hundred quid, I think. So you know, Ooh. not cheap. Ooh, more than an Xbox. Yeah, more than an Xbox, yeah, but it's more powerful than an Xbox. Though, That's it? true. It's the size yeah. of a forty-two inch TV. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it does. It does. The pictures I saw, it looks like a one new server. Yeah. What flipped on its flipped on its, on side. its side? Yeah. It's a 42 inch TV. Ours is 32? Yeah, 30, 32. That's a that. big computer. <laughs> yeah, well, you're pretty thin. The other thing, <laughs> yeah. the other thing is, it's really it, massive. It sort, really of, it, it sort of concertinas out so that, um, like, if your TV is wider, then you can still have the ports all the way to one side of the TV. Hmm. rather than having a big gap behind it. That's cool. Oh, rather than having to yeah, reach right, right round the back of the telly. To, yeah. yeah. Yeah, stop showing off, Mark. <laughs> Did they? Oh, sorry, did they sorry. say? What, I mean, you mentioned GPUs. Did they say what GPU is in it? Uh, no, but they said it could go up to an NVIDIA Titan GTX 780, um, and you get a whack an SSD in there as well, up to a terabyte of storage. You know, which is quite a lot and these how, days. How much difference do you think that will make? Well, I think it's going to make quite a big difference, to be honest. I mean, you know, it's it'll still leave plenty of rooms for things like uh, you know, The Witcher 2 or Max Payne 3. How, how are you getting on with Max Payne 3? Uh, well, to be honest, I'm leaving it to uh, other people. It's a bit too, uh, a bit too simple for me. What about The Witcher? <laughs> I'm, uh, the Witcher is a bit scary, so I'm leaving it. <laughs> wow, fantastic! Yeah, never knew you had it in you for gaming news. Oh, you never Thanks will again. Me. Right, <laughs> there you go. That's the end of the gaming news for this year. Cheers. <laughs> Right. This time last year, as it was our last Christmas show, we made some predictions about what was going to happen in the coming year, which is now the year that's just gone. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, are you following get, me I so far? You. I think even when you listen to it, it'll still be the year that's just gone, won't it? <laughs> Call in for next week's show. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, so you. we're going to, um, we're going to go them. through last yep. year's predictions and find out whether or not we were right. So, right, so um, let's buzz I, through these. Are, you, are we mm. going to do our own, or shall I read? A, I think you should read out what Alan said last okay. year, just to embarrass him. Right. The first thing Alan said was, "There will be an Ubuntu phone available to buy in the shops in one last Western country." And was there? No. Our survey said. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh dear. He go also on, said, then. "After work done to get Ubuntu on the Nexus Seven, thirteen oh four will be released and will be measurably and anecdotally faster, more stable, and more power efficient than previous releases." I, I think that's right, but I don't know. Oh, we'll give you that one. Yeah. Measurably um, by somebody. He said, no new features will land after feature freeze in 1304 and 1310. Brackets less confident about this. I think we, yeah. 
There were no. There were no. We, did, sudden, we didn't have any yeah. like. Oh no, they've dropped new icons on us yeah. at the last minute. Nothing major then. Nothing like no. proper. No. So we're saying that one. That one came true. Yep. Uh, and he also said the number of Linux games on Steam will increase from 1.8% to 20% of the Windows <laughs> games by the end of 2013. So at the time, um, there were uh, uh, 1,814 Windows games, 336 OS X games, and 34 Linux games. Okay, where are we now? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> With a lot of last week's stats. Not that many. There's 250 odd Linux games. Right. right. Mm. So not 20%. So, no, not 20%. A 50% success rate there from Alan. Yeah. That's not bad going. Yeah. Well, okay, so moving on to 33%. Tony. Tony said uh, Adobe will make Creative Suite or just Photoshop able to run on Linux. <laughs> uh, you'll have to. But, but it's on the cloud now, isn't it? In browser. That so count. maybe it works. No, no, no. Don't no, give me. It points. doesn't. Okay. Uh, you'll have to watch a 30 second advert when you log in or unlock Ubuntu <laughs> or pay a premium <laughs> ad free version. I think this was still a good prediction. Yeah, that's not in yet. Uh, <laughs> it's landing in 1404 LTS. <laughs> Nokia will ditch Windows or go bust. Now, wow. There's a little bit of debate around that, I think, because they did get majorly bought out by Microsoft. Yeah. So, so they would have gone bust that's otherwise. That's a bit of a ding I think you get a ding for that. <laughs> I'm in charge. And of the also, controls. incidentally, two years ago, Tony said ButterFS will become the default file system in at least one distro. Well, it hasn't in terms of desktop distros, but the Yola phone uh-huh. ships in shops with ButterFS by default. Wow. Well, well. So you toy. get a ping for that. <laughs> I will take that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it's not ButterFS. <laughs> Go for it. Laura, what were your predictions? <laughs> well, the first one is that Dell will stop shipping Windows pre-installed at all in favour of Ubuntu and selected other Linux distributions. Did that happen? No. Not quite. Not as such. Oh, dear. What, did they stop shipping Windows at all? No, no. they stop shipping Ubuntu in some places. <laughs> but I bought an Ubuntu Dell, so yeah, that makes it all right. Yeah, right. Okay. Next up, John O'Bacon will get an iPhone and will start writing music apps for it. <laughs> no, he doesn't have an iPhone. He has an Ubuntu phone as his only phone. Wow. Really? Now that's yeah. towing the company line just to yeah. the max. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I've been there it when just... the phone didn't ring. <laughs> his, wife, <laughs> his, wife, his wife was calling him and he was getting annoyed with it. So yeah, I know he definitely has one. <laughs> definitely has one and is experiencing the pain to go with yes. it. Mark Shuttleworth will appear on Dancing on Ice in a bid to get mainstream recognition for Ubuntu on tablet, mobile phones, TV or microwaves. That's a good one. I think maybe next year. I, I like that one. And to be fair, he did get mainstream recognition for Ubuntu. Yeah this year so i think that's a little but bit of a i, I think beep. i think the key he, thing there is the dancing, dancing on, on ice, ice. Yeah. well obviously and that's the funny part right yeah, yeah. okay you didn't really mean that bit. Okay. <laughs> not going well um, laura sorry that's all right i don't expect to do you want to tell us what mark predicted last year in all of his wisdom yes uh amazon search will be removed from the dash home lens by default still available as its own lens slash opt-in and <laughs> Is this the same or the second one? That's that's, that's part of the same one. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, RMS still won't be happy. Yeah, that wasn't just a general prediction. That wasn't just the second one. (laughs) General prediction. 2013 RMS won't be happy. So did uh, Amazon Shopping Lens get removed? No. Windows 8 will fail to get much traction. The remaining people hanging on to XP will upgrade to 7 and stay there for as long as possible. In my experience, I think that's quite that's true. Probably, yeah. a, probably ding. a ding there. Yeah, isn't yeah. yeah. that's yeah. a ding ding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well done. No. <laughs> <laughs> a AAA game title will be released simultaneously cross platform, including Linux, Ubuntu 12.04, and perhaps something made by Valve. Mm-hmm. This has got yes. double highlighting on our notes. Yeah, because Mark left a comment because we weren't sure if that actually came true or not. Well, I think we decided it did. It wasn't Let's quite. Ask Tony. Yeah, Tony. Well, I think, um, well, I think, I don't want to spoil the tension, but I think it, I think it did. <laughs> okay. Then. Yeah. yeah. What, which game was that? Uh, Dota 2, I think. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, Defense of the Ancients. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that wasn't quite... I wasn't... used the acronym because I'm okay. a bit more familiar with it. Okay, sorry. Um, so that, yeah, that wasn't quite simultaneously released, but the Mac and Linux versions came out a week after the Windows version, so I That's think good that enough. counts. That's, That's pretty good. good. Enough. Yeah, good enough. And two years ago, Mark said someone will write an open source H.264 plugin for Firefox and HTML5 will video HTML5 video will standardize to that. Nothing to do with Mozilla. And we reported on this a few weeks back from Cisco. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I was I right. Thought, I thought I'd throw that in. 
So every time I go back and review these, I go back last year and the year before. Right? I'm, each Takes time I'm successively yeah, going back further and further. Mm. In 1980, Tony <laughs> once said, anyway. Well, uh, so who won that? Then? Uh, well, I think Mark got three. Mm. Hey. Oh, yeah. You got, I got two. I got one. Tony and you got, got one. two. Tony got two. Uh, two. two. Yeah. two. Yeah. So Rich. yeah, I think Mark won that. Well done. Oh, well done, Mark. Who'd have thought? So then what we need to I move get? on to uh, our predictions for 2014. Chocolate roll. Tony, do you want to start with your predictions for next year? Okay, people, pin back your luggles. Here it comes. Microsoft will cut its losses and scrap the Surface, which is its tablet thing. Um, you mean well, it's already doing that? We already know no, that's well, Surface RT. Oh, okay, the Surface, Surface Pro as well. Yeah, all of the Surface line. They're going to give up on tablets. They decided it's not worth the hassle. Interesting. Okay. They're going to go back right. to beige boxes okay. um, that you carry around in a big case. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. It's not working for them. Windows is a rubbish touch <laughs> interface. It's confusing when people have a laptop and you s- smash at the screen with your <laughs> fingers and it covers all it right, in right. jam. <laughs> <laughs> in my experience. Uh, Canonical, oh. those lovely people at Canonical, will continue their trend of forking random bits of Linux infrastructure and uh, decide to write its own kernel because the uh, the <laughs> Linux kernel just, just isn't quite right. I think we'll use right. her. Are you gonna? Are you gonna say we're gonna use her? No, they're gonna write their own. Uh, okay, well, just completely. Uh, yeah. from scratch. Yeah, you or kernel. fork something. Yeah, they're gonna start with no, no, not fork. Gonna just be, gonna start. Yeah. Start from basically. Scratch. Kind of, wait, wait, if Canonical kind of builds something, it's better to start from scratch. Right. Yeah. To get rid of all the old cruft. Yeah. So just they're just gonna start from scratch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What else? That's what they're gonna do. Uh, the British government will block legal websites because they have some smutty imagery they don't like. We already know they're gonna do that. Do yeah, we block they the Sun, the Daily Star, Daily yep. Mail. It's block all of those it's all gonna all gonna be blocked mm. anything well not not just smutty newspapers but yeah anything that like might be slightly misconstrued um drug sites information about drugs that sort of thing uh-huh. yeah it's all we oh yeah this is bad bang there we go okay safe prediction but at least all of our children will be safe uh yeah i haven't got any <laughs> our cats will be safe the cats will be, cats safe, will be yeah. safe from seeing yeah getting upset by online images mm. yeah and finally it'll be reported that the nsa and gchq have broken ssl or compromised it in some way They'll right. de- maybe they have uh, the backdoor keys to all of the big CA's uh, certificates. They'll, yeah, basically, it's worthless. Right. I like Interesting. That. Yeah. Right. Those mm. are my big four. Okay. Laura, your turn. What do you predict for 2014? So, based on past experience, I'm not very good at predictions. So, I asked on Twitter what people thought. <laughs> you outsourced <laughs> this part of the segment. Uh, and my tweets came through. Good. So, I've got there'll be more tablets than laptops. Where? What, on the Isle of Wight, or uh... possibly it was from Andy at the sea. <laughs> right, thought so. Um, Which means there will be a tablet. <laughs> That's really <laughs> deliberately vague. I think you're going to get a ding next year. For More that. tablets than laptops in the world. Let's okay. say in, in the, the world. world. Okay. 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 Um, Nordred and MQTT will take over the world. Now that's a slightly IBM centric one, but it's valid because it's open source. Okay. okay. That was also Thank from Andy. I have no idea what either of those are, so chances are M- we'll talk about it in the next M-T-T season. MTT we've talked about before. Yeah, I, I'm blocking it from my mind. Okay. <laughs> Nord Red is quite cool. Tony's being a waitress. And, he is. Uh, He's pouring uh, more mulled wine mulled for us. wine. Yes, keep it going. Um, keep it going. Keep ja- it going. Keep it going. Keep JavaScript <laughs> apps on the Ubuntu desktop. I quite like this one. Cause well, this... we sort of... I mean, yeah, QML um, uses JavaScript, mm. doesn't it? Yeah, so that's interesting. Yeah. That was from Doesn't Andy Lochran. Okay. Uh, and, go on. And so do Cordova apps. Yep. So we've already got that. Yeah, no, we don't. So it's not really. dead cert not then, desktop. isn't it? Oh, not on the desktop. No, okay. No. Specifically on the yeah. desktop. Okay. So on the desktop. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Right. Thank okay. you. It's all right. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> so uh, MongoDB will replace Couch. I don't, okay. I assume that means. In As Ubuntu the for the Ubuntu one stocks that uses Couch, doesn't it? No, no not anymore. No, it's U1 DB. Yeah. Or well, maybe it'll replace right. that as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because despite what Stuart Language said, yeah. um, SQL databases do have their place. Yes. Okay, so what that else? was an Andy Locker one as well. And final one for Mandy it says Node WebKit and MongoDB providing network attached apps. And I've got no idea what that one even means. <laughs> Great. So we'll file that for next year. <laughs> we'll awesome. Find, next year we can find out if two people called Andy on the internet are wrong oh, or yeah. right with their predictions. <laughs> well done, registered you. that. Uh, Go on then, Mark. What are your predictions for 2014? Um, I reckon that the success of SteamOS 
will drive NVIDIA to greatly improve its Linux support and therefore make them the de facto standard for high-performance graphics on Linux. Aren't so, they already? I mean, it seems to be a six of one, half dozen of the other between them What's and the AMD. Other? Oh. Really? Yeah. I thought everyone who wanted a high-power machine bought NVIDIA already. I don't. And and yeah. there was the whole Optimus thing where they released... Oh, yeah, and they got a middle finger from Linux. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But I, I, think, I think that um, the success of SteamOS will make them say, right, we're going to be the choice for SteamOS and we're going to make sure that we're the best supported... On Linux. On Linux. Okay. And then no one's going to buy AMD for Linux anymore. Okay. Mm, interesting. Um, mm. I'm going to predict that I will be using Ubuntu as my main phone OS by the end of the year. Well, anybody could say that. And just I was going to say, that, that should and, actually be mine. And oh, I more. will be able to do everything that I can currently do on my Android phone. Oh. Even Tiny Death Star. Oh, okay, that's bold. Not, not everything that's possible on an Android phone, but everything I currently use my Android phone for, uh, I you, will be able to use that Ubuntu Please tell me for. you only use your phone for listening to music and making phone calls. I'm apparently not making phone calls. <laughs> if Jono's well, experience no, not, is anything to go Not making phone calls to Jono's wife. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I currently don't make phone calls to Jono's wife. Let's so. just well, get that clear. That's 50% <laughs> way there, then we're done. <laughs> awesome. What else? Um... Finally, I think that the the top five distros on the DistroWatch ranking at this time next year will all still be using X by default. Ooh. So no one will have switched to Mia by default. No one will have switched to Wayland by default. Interesting. Not even Ubuntu. So, so what are the top five? Just so uh, we can record yeah, them. Uh, no, no, sorry. At this time next year, the, 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 top, the top five, five ranked... are... At this time next year. Okay, for the, for record, right now the top five for the last six months: Mint, Debian, Ubuntu, Majea, Fedora. So hey, hang on. So I'll say if Mint, Ubuntu, Debian, Majea, Majea, Majea. That's the one I didn't I didn't recognize. Yeah. That's Fedora. used to be Mandrake, I think. Ah, yeah. right. Okay, Mint. Debian. So say Ubuntu were to make it its default by that prediction, you mean it wouldn't be in the top five? <laughs> either well, either yeah, either the ones which switch won't be in the top five anymore, or the ones that are currently in the top five will stay in the top five, but none of them will have switched. Okay, is, interesting. Is the okay. Ubuntu working towards having it as default in the next? Shh, don't LTS? spoil! Don't spoil his prediction. I'm He'll sorry. change it. He'll change it. <laughs> okay then. So Alan, using no internal knowledge from Canonical whatsoever, what that are your was hard actually. Yeah, I was going to. I was <laughs> going to say everyone will be running Ubuntu on their phone and tablet by the end of the year because L- I know that's true. On their LG phone. On their insert brand name here. <laughs> phone. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that in later. Let's try so to I trip look him like up. I predicted it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not saying the company name because I'll be fired uh so the the ones that uh i predict uh some mega corporation will throw a patent case at canonical you mean mega yeah. corp is in google Apple i mean i mean someone big and not just a patent troll oh, not right. just okay. someone who's got someone a library the, of patents right. that they're, they're throwing around like so, you know the the companies that, that throw thousands of them out yeah. every so day. that would be canonical has arrived <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Yes. First, they uh, laugh at you, then they fight you. Exactly. So that, that's my first prediction. The second one is Ouya Mark Ooh, yeah. Two. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Mark Two will be released and will flop worse than the first one. <laughs> so you were just telling us about how fun no. it is to play, but you still. I told you how fun it is for two games that are exclusive to that platform to oh, play. I see. Yes, uh, but I reckon they they're, they're planning on a second generation. I sus- I don't I don't know nothing about it but I suspect it will arrive in 2014 and it will flop badly. Okay. And finally, I predict Linux Mint will switch to Debian permanently. Right. So they, they currently have a Debian edition. You think that would be the only edition? I think they will throw out Ubuntu and only use Debian as their base for future releases of Linux Mint and they won't continue to have an Ubuntu-based version. I think mm. that's my prediction. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, there we go. Join us this time next year to find out if we were right, wrong, or just indifferent. Or if we just forget to have this segment again next week. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. Fun productions. And Dave Hills from uh, Surrey Luck has sent us a command line love. Oh, thank you, Dave. Um, he says GRML dash rescue boot. Um, have you used it, anyone? No, but it sounds brilliant. It does, doesn't it? That's what I thought. I think I have. 
But go on. Okay. <laughs> so he says, it allows me to download an Ubuntu ISO and boot the ISO from the Grub boot menu. He uses it for reinstalls when he breaks Ubuntu and to install pre-releases for general testing. The really cool thing is that during the Grub boot process, you can edit the Grub command line and replace Quiet Splash with to RAM. And this loads the ISO into RAM and boots it, and you can imagine how quick that is. Wow. Um, so installing Ubuntu from RAM also reduces my install time to 7 minutes 29 seconds Whoa. for a rotating hard disk, nice. um, which is absolutely superb. No more mucking around with USB sticks and DVDs, just torrent the ISO, check MD5 sum, sudo cp the ISO to the directory, and update grub and reboot. Right, so instead of downloading the ISO, finding a disk, burning it on the disk, booting it off the optical media, which is slow and worry and takes time, or trying to find a USB stick that you haven't got something on. That's big enough. That's big enough and using the right tool to make the ISO into a bootable USB. The right version USB. of the right tool. <laughs> yeah, to make the ISO into a bootable USB stick and then booting from that, which is still slower than doing it from the hard disk. It's just boot straight That's from the That's quite cunning. Yeah. I mean, it does. Pr- it's a very specific use case that you already have Linux and working Linux yeah. and Grub on the machine. And you want to boot from something else. Mm. But it's good for trying stuff out as well. Mm. The other thing as well that I, I often find myself doing is if I ever want to mess around with my partitions, I have to download a live GParted right, ISO yes. and then stick it on a USB stick. Whereas if I can just always have it sitting there and just boot into that ISO. Yeah. The other thing that I, I've used something similar to this, but not this. Um, I, I'm not quite sure how I did it. I think I've fudged around with the Grub config is to boot um, the ISO image for um, firmware updates for my oh. uh, laptop. Right. Oh. So the firmware update for the ThinkPad it comes in the form of an ISO image, and I plopped it in a directory, and now when I go into my Grub menu at the bottom, there's firmware file listed, hmm. and, and I can boot from that and then firmware update my machine. So, yeah, there, there's a few use cases where that might be quite handy, actually. I like that. Excellent, and particularly if it follows a sim link, because you can have a sim link and just change where that points. Yeah. I suspect that wouldn't yeah. work. I don't I it won't work not. for me anyway, because my home directory is encrypted, so it would fail. Oh, oh that's true. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, Dave. Thank you very much. So over the last uh, year, Tony's inserted uh, little stings into the show, and uh, these, of course, some furore from our <laughs> listeners uh, who have uh, loved and hated them in equal amounts. Yeah, uh, partly because uh, Tony keeps threatening more quizzes, uh, and uh, we haven't had any quizzes for a long time. So I thought I'd uh, I thought we'd have a new quiz, which is called "I'm a Celebrity." Get me out of this Ubuntu pointless pod busting <laughs> to one. And, <laughs> <laughs> is there a theme tune? <laughs> no, there isn't a theme tune. Oh. Uh, but if someone wants to write a theme tune and sing the sing theme, theme tune, tune. <laughs> <laughs> send it in and we won't play it. Um, so the 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 way this is going to work is uh, t- uh, very much like Blockbuster. Tony is in a team all on his own uh, and Laura and Mark are in a team together. So they can confirm. Five. Uh, but when you let me know your answer, you have to tell me that that is your answer rather right. than just blurting your stuff out and then saying, yeah, we did say that. We did say that. Whereas Tony doesn't have anyone to confer with. How's, why is that? Because, because you always win. Yeah, because you'll win anyway. Basically, I don't win. So, <laughs> yeah, so that It's means a pity by put, pairing. By, by putting a, yeah, there would be a paradox. If we put Laura on the same team as you, you would both win and lose at the same time, and we couldn't have that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I have some prepared questions that I came up with. Uh, by Half of them came from uh, the show notes for this show, which will be given... <laughs> To Mark and Laura, which, uh, <laughs> which the, Laura writes most of the exactly. time. Exactly. Uh, the other half came from a game that my children have. It is a Doctor Who quiz game, <laughs> <laughs> and there's like a hundred cards with Doctor Who questions on. So I oh boy stole a load from that. So <clears throat> bit of quiet, please. Uh, no. Uh, if, if Tony doesn't know an answer, do we get to have a go for a bonus a point? Uh, I'm going to score as we go, and okay. I'm not going to tell you how the scores work. <laughs> Uh, just like you no, are. no, no, uh, no conferring for Tony. And uh, <laughs> please, audience, if you could keep it quiet, thank you. Very much. <laughs> uh, we'll start with uh, we'll start with uh, Mark and Laura. How many separate interviews have we done for UUPC? Ever? Yep. 
Now, mm. I'll, I'll let you be five either way of the right how, answer. How many episodes have there been? There have been about 100. Talk years. into your microphone. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, conferring, you can confer into oh, okay, the microphone. Okay, we can confer into the microphone. Um, don't spend all day on it. So there'll be about 140 episodes. <laughs> Uh, Don't no look it cheating. up. <laughs> we did have a big list of them at one point. Yeah, it's been updated recently. That's yeah. why it's at the top of the list. <laughs> I'm gonna, and we did. Oh, I would go with what did, you're saying. We did one every. We did one every other episode this season, which would be about twenty. So I, I'm going to guess it. We've done sixty-five. Mm. <laughs> okay. That's our. Is answer. that is that your final answer? I think so. Laura yeah. isn't giving me an alternative. Laura, is you... this ever you say? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. about 140 what you said originally no 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 no. that's too many because we don't do one every episode and that you includes... can't actually just look up the answer that's <laughs> it's actually fine. She cheating can. she can't. fine she can because we've got to win somehow <laughs> <laughs> so we're we saying 140 you're going to look up the answer in your brain yeah we, oh. thought, we do yes and that's the point of yeah, the about quiz about 140 about okay. 140 is your, that your final answer mm-hmm. final answer the answer is 125 oh, <laughs> oh you're still that... wrong <laughs> <laughs> I made that deliberately wrong because I knew you'd look it up <laughs> You must have been messing with it. Yes. <laughs> Tony, over yes. to you. Oh, so, no point so far. Tony, in what year did Peter Davidson first appear in Doctor Who? Which year did Peter Davidson first appear in Doctor Who? To the best of my knowledge, he didn't have any other roles before he took on the Doctor, so I will say 1981. Ding. Correct. Oh. Tony, What's one correct answer. Anything? It's a Doctor <laughs> Who question. Doctor no, Who question. The, the any other roles before. Well, it, it, the he question, a, if he had played part. somebody else first, oh. then yeah. like Colin okay. Baker did. Okay, anyway, In. moving on. Uh, Mark and Laura. Mm-hmm. Yes. What project was Phil Hands interviewed about? Stop <laughs> looking at the thing now. I'm looking straight at you. Phil Hands. <laughs> that is a real name. Hmm. Was it Own Cloud? What do you think? We can, uh, we can um, confer. I must. Yeah. Uh, yes. I don't think it was, actually. I think that was Frank somebody. Um, oh, but I can't think what time, else it would have been. Yeah. Okay, then. Um, any other suggestions? No. Okay, I'm going to guess Own Cloud. Okay, I'm afraid it was Debbie in the UK. Oh. I don't even no, remember Phil. that interview. I don't Phil think Hans. it was here. Phil Hans. Yeah, we've interviewed him twice, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, over to you, Tony. Yo. What does the sixth doctor wear on his lapel? Oh, a badge of a that. cat. Oh. oh. Ding. Yeah, ding. Tony has two no, correct answers. Mark and Laura. Yes. Mm-hmm. At Linux stop looking at the document. I'm just finding where we are in the show. <laughs> at Linux World Expo in 2008, we conducted interviews with three people. Mm. Ryan Osmek, <clears throat> Simon Riggs and Taras Balog about their respective projects. Can you name one of oh, their projects? Oh, I can. <laughs> Was one of them uh, one of the Novell code dumps? The uh, chuck the code over the wall and run mm. jobs. The folder one. I folder. folder. Yeah, maybe. No, that was no. before. I don't know. It might have been. What year was this, sir? Uh, 2008. Oh, no, oh, it could have been iFolder. Uh, could have been First iFolder. year of the show. That's when we went. That could, have, that could well have been iFolder. Yeah, let's go with that. I'm afraid the answers are Joomla, PostgreSQL, and OpenNMS. Oh. Not so any no of points ones. there. Yeah. Tony, which famous model did the Doctor get engaged to? Um, model? Engaged? He's supposed, supposed to have married Marilyn Monroe. Was she, was she an actress She's as well? She's not a model. Well, she modelled, but yeah, she modelled for Playboy. Um, As you well know. Is that your final answer? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, go on then. Yes, you're right. It was Marilyn Monroe. (laughs) Another correct answer for the Doctor Who podcast. Uh, (laughs) Okay, Mark and Laura. Yes. Uh, We have interviewed, who have we interviewed most on the show and how many times? It's got to be John O. Or no, hold on. It's it there Matt are Ruffell? two people, and I'll let you get oh, either. It's of them. either John or Ack. I'm sure we. I'm sure I remember. You said there were two people, so it could be both of them. Ack. I think we've interviewed Matt Ravel a few times, haven't we? Have no, we, have Stuart we... Language more. And how many? How many times have we done him? Three. No. I've, mm. <laughs> is it, how many? T- is that part of the answer? How many times? Uh, no, I'll give you a bonus point if you tell me. Okay, I reckon. How many seasons have we done? Six. I reckon Stuart Language six times. Or at least five. At least five. Let's say, let's say five times. 
Okay, so he's saying Stuart Langridge and five. Yes. The answer is Jono and Ack. And it is five times. So I'm going to give you two points for that, for a bit of catching up there. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah, told you. I'm not going to tell you how the points work. Okay. Uh, Tony. Oh, just for the benefit of the listeners who don't know, Ack is Stuart Langridge. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we were right. Tony, what is the title of the story set on a pirate ship in the 17th century? Um, the Curse of the Black Spot. Yes. Oh. Well done. It's all uh, the easy ones. Mark and Laura. <laughs> We frequently interview non-Ubuntu projects and distros. Yes. I'll give you a point for every distro that's not Ubuntu that we have interviewed. Crunchbang. Yes. Um, Mint. Mint, yeah. Um, what's the... <laughs> we can see that on video. Uh, <laughs> if you, are you going to tell me Mint? Because I might take a point away for that. I, th- I think no. she did. <laughs> not Mint. Fedora? Um, sorry? Fedora? Fedora? So Are you giving me that as an answer? Fedora. Debian. Debian we have. Debian UK we interviewed. Is that an answer? Fred. Is that an answer? Phil. <laughs> Fred, Phil. Come on, is that an answer? Yes, Debian. Okay, you get another point. For... Um, hang on. Does does OpenSUSE build service count as OpenSUSE? Yes. Yes. Okay. No. Then, then. Yeah, no. Okay, we don't, okay. An- we don't we give don't. that answer. That's not the answer. <laughs> um, there was those those two guys who did the... the... Oh, oh, oh. A- Irish... Yeah, them. What was it called? You were... Oh. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. two... The Time's two, running out. The two Irish schoolboys yeah. who are now still doing it. And, yeah. that, and it's really cool. Yeah. Um, Keep going. X Ubuntu. No. What? Zubuntu. I'm, I'm Zubuntu. sorry, we're running... We're running Zubuntu. Zubuntu. No. That's Ke- the, we Ke- definitely Ke- interviewed them. Ke- 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 Ubuntu or something. No. You're just saying the- words now. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, have you, is that all you've come up with now? Yeah. I think we're no, running out of time. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to no. have to hurry you. No. Okay, we're out of time. So you got Crunchbang and you got Debian. What you didn't get was CentOS, Karimba Singh, the interview from CentOS. Oh, yeah. You didn't get Elementary OS, which was, oh, was this first? season. No, and season. the one you nearly got was Zorin. Oh. Zorin, that was it. Ah. Tony. Hello. I think we should get half a point for Zorin. <laughs> <laughs> half a point because for two Irish school, school kids. <laughs> yeah, well they did very well. They did. Uh, who is Darla von Carlson working for, Tony? Darla von Carlson. Mm. No, pass. <gasps> oh, is, is, it, is, is it a modern one? I'll, I'll throw it over to uh, Laura if you want to answer it. Is it a modern one? I'm not answering that, but go on. Is it the... the f- who does Darla von Carlson work for? I don't actually know, but is okay. it the guy who collects Daleks? <laughs> no. Uh, That's Henry Van Staten. Yes. Okay. No. Uh, the answer is the Daleks. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, see, I was close. I said Daleks. Uh, so, uh, Mark, Mark and Laura, there's yes. an opportunity to pick up two more points here. Oh. We <laughs> often talk about hack spaces and maker spaces on the show. Representative from which two hack spaces have been interviewed by Dublin. us? Dublin. <laughs> because I interviewed him. Yep. Yeah, uh, a London one as well. And Manchester, I thought we <laughs> talked to someone from Manchester, didn't Possibly. we? Possibly. <laughs> but apparently there's only two, so are the two in there somewhere? Two of those. Well, tell me what they are. You Dublin. just rattled off like four towns. Dublin. Dublin and Farnborough. I talked to the ones in Dublin. I def- that was the first time I heard of Hack Spaces. Dublin so. and Farnborough. Yeah. I'm afraid it's Dublin. Farnborough's Surrey. Dublin and London. London Hack Spaces. We spoke to, spoke to John T. Ware. We, also, we also spoke to We also spoke to Anton from Southampton. Yes. Southampton. Southampton, yeah. Okay. But that wasn't on Alan's list. That wasn't on my list. I'm going <laughs> to give you a point anyway. No. <laughs> Tony, what's the name of K9's introductory story? Um, the uh, yeah, um, I would say the invisible enemy. Yes, well done, Tony. <laughs> the you thing with the giant prawn. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark and Laura. Mm-hmm. Yes. With whom was arguably the most drunken interview we've ever done? done with you oh yeah. no you did the interview <laughs> maybe no 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 who, who were we interviewing who was drunk yeah no i was drunk you, you were, were drunk, drunk and you were interviewing someone yes oh <laughs> i don't remember that i blocked that out i think i just remember the babbling afterwards it was at alan's house it was at alan's it? house hence the in drunk. the kitchen oh this is another one. Oh, <laughs> well that way maybe maybe better yeah that wasn't an interview <laughs> which one was more drunken no the one in alan's kitchen wasn't an interview oh, okay. it was just babble right <laughs> 
or an episode, as we like to call it. <laughs> yeah, we've got tighter since then. Yeah. Okay, well, the, the two answers I had were Safe Lotfi and Robbie Williamson. Um, I think you could have said Robbie Williams. Uh, like, yes. You really were drunk. Is that <laughs> Robbie Williamson from Foundations? Yes. Yeah, as he was. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the one where Davey was yeah, yeah. fun. Yes. Uh, Mar- uh, Tony. I don't remember Back that. over to you. Uh, what do you call a single member of the silence? A silent. Yes. Well done, Tony. <laughs> um, Mark and Laura. In season five, we interviewed two projects about computer game related pro- topics. When, sorry? In season five, we interviewed two projects about computer game related topics. Name the games. Um, one of them was Nikki and the Robots. Oh, yes. Correct. And the other one... Oh, yeah. No, it wasn't. I don't think. Computer game. Computer games. Computer games. Game. 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 Thanks for listening. Oh, 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 oh! Same hospital. <laughs> yes. yes. Correct. Yes. Well done. I would have also accepted. I got that. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I would have accepted Corsix TH. As yeah, well, that's the real the name. Project. Yes. Uh, Tony, back to you. Yes. What is the first Doctor Who story set entirely on a spaceship? <gasps> Edge of Destruction. Yes. <laughs> Correct answer. Did you say the first one? Who knows? Uh, yeah. Um, right, Mark and Laura, using your combined brain power, we have interviewed uh, a few people about talking about taking control as opposed to proprietary web apps, taking control of your oh, data. Yes. Uh, can you name all of those projects? <laughs> That we have interviewed. Diaspora. Could... Diaspora, own cloud, synchrony. Eucalyptus, is that one? Mm, did... We talked to Davey about it and he works on it. Okay. Um, uh, Bintu, oh, no, Bintu one is sort of proprietary ish. Um, have there been any others? On in your own data. Uh, ooh, ooh. No, that's Diaspora again. Do we know how many there are? Oh! It's five. That that one... Status net? Status net? Yeah. There was that one that looks like um, <laughs> Facebook, but not... It It kind of worked well, but it, it looked kind of... Diaspora? 95. Um, I don't know what that is. We interviewed a guy about it. You're listening to the Ubuntu podcast. <laughs> no. Okay. I th- right, we're running I out of time. Oh! I can't remember what it's called. Well, you got actually, you got three of them: Synchrony, uh, Own Cloud, and Diaspora. The other two I was looking for were Buddy Cloud. Was that that one? I was uh, probably. It yeah, was, I think yeah, so. Like a yeah. Mess oh yes, no, I remember that. It yes. was sort of. And a... I actually also put Open Street Map on there as well. Oh, yeah. Them. yeah, yeah. I forget. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, Tony, back to you. Uh, so yeah, I suppose I should give you three points, but I think I've already given you <laughs> those three, fun. so it's loads <laughs> more points. Um, <laughs> Tony, uh, what year does the Doctor crash land the TARDIS in Amelia Pond's garden? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, you have to work it out. Right. So she was nineteen when he came back, which was supposedly in two thousand and uh, two thousand and ten, and she was. Six, I think, mm. Amelia. So that's Did you 13. say 12 years? Yeah. So, yeah, 12, you 12 13 years. Yeah. So I'm going to say... <laughs> I've so, got to take the questions where I can. Let's say, let's say 97. So close, Tony. It was 96. Oh, okay. Oh, dear. Oh, well. I was right ballpark. Well, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And your way off. Uh, final question for Mark and Laura. Uh, it's your chance to win this because Tony's got way more points than you have. Uh, which is the only lug to have featured in an interview, and who was the interviewee? An interview. Yes. Oh, one of our interviews. You're not yeah, just yeah, remember. Yeah, we're not talking yeah. about Doctor Who now. Oh boy. Um, Context switch here. Interviews. Ooh, which lug, lug did we talk about and who did we talk about it with? Was it... Oh, oh dear. No, that's not really... A do you lug. remember when lugs were a thing, Alan? I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Berkeley. No, I don't know this. Oh, let me think. Okay. <laughs> you haven't I, got long because we're over two let minutes Laura already. Let think. Um, Could be a while. You are yeah. on the radio, just to... Yes. Yeah, I'll keep talking while I'm thinking and I just don't know what the answer Dead is. Dead air is a crime. Da, 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 da. <laughs> no. Um, I don't I'm going to guess it. and say Hampshire, but I don't think it is because I can't remember the interview. 
The answer is Cumbria Lug. Mm-hmm. And it was Dave Schwuck. Murphy. Dave Schwuck. In, I think, our second or third episode. Series, yeah. And it was at second. my house. Yeah. Yeah. On your settee. Yes. Well, no yes. wonder I don't remember. Right there, yeah. That's fair yeah. enough. Uh, I think I was learning Pearl in the corner. Okay, so Tony, your final question. It's before we gave you a microphone. Yeah. Which, which story featured a sky shark? Um, the a Christmas Carol. Correct. Well done. So, at the end of that, I'm a celebrity. Get me out of this Ubuntu pointless podbuster to one. It's a draw. <laughs> 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 or thereabouts. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for taking part. See you again next year. The Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If there's something you think we should talk about or someone we should talk to, tweet at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. And remember, if we don't hear from you, we might not have enough content. And that can only mean one thing, more quizzes. Now it's time for the feedback. And there's a new podcast in town, and they sent us this. Linux Luddites is a show where we try out all the latest free and open source software and then decide we like the old stuff better. More than just news and releases, we check out a wide range of Linux distros, cover your feedback, talk about obscure command line programs, discuss burning issues over a pint, and much, much more. So join me, Paddy, and me, Joe, every two weeks for news, reviews, comment, and generally being grumpy at linuxluddites.com. Linux Luddites, because not all change is progress. <laughs> I listened to one of their episodes uh, today, actually. It's really very good. It's, but you it's were mentioned in to. it. Well, that wasn't the reason I listened to it. <laughs> but it was quite good. Anyway. I like their taste in music, too. I don't. Mm. Uh, Jezra emailed about uploading files in Ubuntu Touch. From a developer standpoint, it would be great to visit bug tracker websites and be able to upload a screenshot of a UI bug that one has encountered on the mobile device. File upload has been part of the HTML specification since the late 90s and there's no reason to leave this functionality out of a system just because the system fits in one's pocket. P.S. Mwah! I love you all. We love you too, Jezra. Yeah, that's just talking about the HTML being able to upload files. We talked yeah. about, you know, how the, the browsers, browsers can't, can't yet. Yes. yes. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. And Acer emailed us about our command history discussion. The solution is switching to ZSH. Unlike Bash, ZSH or ZSH saves immediately to the history file. Also, check out the GRML's ZSH or ZSH config. It's incredible. It makes Bash feel nearly as clumsy as the Windows command line. Interesting. Mm. I've never tried ZSH or zzz. No, I've seen lots of people raving about it and sharing complex config files that make everything like really fancy and mm. awesome. Like yeah. Ursi then. Cool. So Campbell Barron also emailed and mentioned ZSH or zzz. And <laughs> <laughs> that's just the wine. I always say ZSH. And sent us a couple of links to possible solutions, which we'll stick in the show notes because they were far too long to read out. Awesome. Excellent. So it sounds like that's the way to go, ZSH. There is a solution, and it's Z-shaped. Right. If you want to maintain your bash history. (laughs) Or or your not bash history. Or your your command command line history. history. Yes. Mm. Excellent. I love it when people actually email in and listen to like command line love and come up with suggestions to some of these problems. Yeah, because it means less quizzes. Fewer quizzes. Fewer quizzes. Fewer quizzes. Oh, that's, that's a callback to episode one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had another one as well, but it just stupid Google Drive app wouldn't work. Um, okay. So James Lewis emailed in and he said he recently had to research the X3 for a file system to address an issue at work. And so when he heard our comments about the file create time in Ubuntu on our last podcast, he actually knew the answer. Um, ah. so, so you can find out when a file was originally created. Yes. Ah, so he said, historically, Linux file systems have not supported the file birth time, but realizing that it's a d- d- desirable thing, Theodore So actually added it to X4. However, as he said in a post on the subject, it's not really as simple as all that because it requires updates to many other projects, not least the kernel VFS and glibc, to update the stat syscall so that it can return that value. And I'm not sure that can be done without breaking existing apps. However, the data is there and you can get it. And he goes on to explain how. Oh, I thought awesome. it was quite interesting, so hmm. it was worth including. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you for all your feedback over the course of this year. Yes. That's all for this episode and indeed this season and this year of the Ubuntu podcast. We will probably, maybe, be back in 2014, subject to confirmation. <laughs> uh, no, you sound quite so Oh, yes, we have to do the it. team curry, don't we? Have to we? do the curry. Yes. Yep, we have to bond. And, uh... I'll bring a power supply. <laughs> right. <Don't worry>. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bring your ooh yeah. Well, anyway, we'll hopefully we'll continue bringing you up to date with all the latest news about Ubuntu and free software in the new year. And um, if you celebrate Christmas, I hope you have a great one and enjoy uh, the New Year celebrations as well. Yes. There if you go. if you really want us to come back, then why not drop us an email and make us feel loved? Yeah. Can you all please stop talking? I've got a train to catch. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so if I don't play the intro, the outro music for a bit longer, is that does that push things a little bit further? It's not stressful at all. Okay. See you all next year. Bye. Bye. Merry Bye-bye. Christmas. Bye.